Jesus Christ is perfect theology. He's perfect theology. It is theologically immoral to allow anything, any revelation about God that contradicts what you see in the person of Jesus, to allow that to trump your concept of what God is like. The clearest manifestation of the nature of the Father is seen in the person of Jesus. He made it very clear. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How did he handle sin? How did he handle sinners? How did he handle disease? Is anybody alive in the building? We got concepts of the nature of God that are, that are, that are based on disappointment, not based on revelation. See, your questions about God, the questions that every one of us have, none of them have the authority to cancel a revelation. What God has shown us about his nature in the person of Jesus, I'm eternally responsible for. I'm responsible to represent Christ, represent Christ, to represent him as he is. When God made it possible for the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to live inside of me, it made powerlessness inexcusable and unacceptable powerlessness is inexcusable and unacceptable the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in me and is in you and he wants out I like to put it this way he's, he's not in us as a lake he's in us as a river and rivers flow from it's the most amazing thing to me to see the nature of God, how it becomes your nature as a believer. At some point, we're actually going to have to believe in our own conversion. At some point, because we keep praying for stuff we already got. We keep praying for things that we already have, and we wonder why we get bored in prayers, because we labor over things that we already possess. And the Lord is releasing a spirit of wisdom and revelation over his people where we actually rise to who he says we are. See, I can't afford to have a thought in my head about me that's not in his head about me. It's important that we learn to ponder things that the Holy Spirit can say amen to. Your mind is a very valuable thing. Jesus himself died to protect that mind of yours. It was so important to him that the mind but the mind is only useful when it becomes under the influence of the spirit man. He wants to teach us how to think. He wants to teach us divine perspective. The Lord is into building something, a revival culture that creates the atmosphere where anything can happen at any time. And our effort is not to get people into the building, it's to get the kingdom out onto the streets. And the passion that the Lord is releasing in this hour is raising up a group of people that are trained. We're going to see miracles today. We see them every, every time we, we declare his word. It's just there's never an exception. We always see that. But I didn't come for that. I can see that at home. I came to help raise up an army. So we're going to have a, a wonderful time tonight just watching what Jesus does and giving him glory. And there's just no labor to it. It's just all fun. It's just all encouraging. But I want to start by just telling you, Jesus Christ is perfect theology. He's perfect theology theology how many people did he turn away when they came for a miracle you know it, it was it's strange but it didn't even matter how much faith we sometimes use faith as the qualifier for getting a miracle and he just didn't even use that as an excuse to not heal someone i mean the lowest measure i can find in the bible is the guy who came with his son that was tormented by demons and he comes to jesus and in mark 9 and he, he says if you are able would you heal my son that's not like a whole lot of faith coming to God and saying, you know, I don't know if you can handle the size of my problem. But Jesus, what he did is he would always address if there was fear, if there was little faith, if there was great faith. He would always identify what they had. And in this case, he talked about his fear. He says, it's not what I can do. It's if you believe. And he addressed the guy says, well, help me in my unbelief. So he was struggling with his faith. What did Jesus do? Provided a miracle. Why? Because he would provide the miracle to give him access to the realm of faith he talked to him about. He wouldn't withhold the miracle as punishment. He did not withhold because he had something to give. He knew the heart of the Father. And it's really a big deal that we learn how to re-present Christ. Most, most of us. You know, we've, we've, we've got good things that we've learned. We're, we're, in a, we're in a culture that has very many positive 
things to it. But do you understand? There's all, we've learned so many things that we've got to unlearn. The Lord's just trying to tear off the layers of things that we thought about them. They're just, they're just simply not true. They're not true at all. And the Lord is after that because he's after your mind. He's after your mind because your mind becomes the canvas that he paints on. It becomes the very thing that receives that impression, that, that impression of what God is saying and what God is doing. There, 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 something happens in a renewed mind. A renewed mind is like one of the most valuable things. I, I believe we're in the beginning stages of a reformation. And I believe one of the absolute most essential ingredients of this, this move of God that will shape the course of history and affect entire nations of the world. This move of God has a, one of its main priorities and core values is the renewing of the mind. And the renewing of the mind is not simply being able to quote a verse to address a specific problem. It is not that. It is a renewed mind that comes from a divine encounter. Any revelation from Scripture that does not take me to the person of Jesus in divine encounter will only make me more religious. It will only equip me to argue with people who disagree. And what has to happen is that you and I, as we learn from the Scriptures and we see what God is saying, it is vital to us to say, you know what, it's not good enough for me to have the concept and the theory. I must have the experience. I must be a person that can deliver the goods. It's not good enough that I can just say, go to such and such a church, you can get a miracle there. That's not good enough anymore. It's not good enough anymore that we can say, go to Reading or go to Dallas or go wherever. That's not good enough anymore. It's got to be that you and I learn how to take this gospel that is no limit in its power, no limit in the reach of God's compassion and love for people to take it right into the, right into the gut of our cities, right into, the, right into the core of our cities. Because Jesus is interested in changing culture, not just getting bodies in chairs. Did you know the, the, the greatest privilege and treasure that you and I have to give away is actually the presence of the Lord? Why do you think Peter's shadow would heal people? Because your shadow will always release whatever overshadows you. As you learn to host the presence of the Lord, there is something that takes place around you as you learn to carry the actual atmosphere of heaven, the actual atmosphere of another world. 